Okay, we've just found out that if a function is an even function, we can put in opposite inputs and get the same output. If a function is an odd function, we can put in opposite inputs and get opposite outputs. Now, if we don't get either of those, that means the function is neither. Not all functions are even or odd. Some can be neither. So we're going to take that idea and we're going to look at how we can tell if a function is odd or even or neither by looking at specific values in the function and by looking at the actual equation of the function. So is the function odd, even, or neither? Try substituting both positive 2 and negative 2 in each equation. So if we do f of 2 here, we get 2 squared minus 5, which is 4 minus 5, or negative 1. If we put negative 2 in here, we get negative 2 squared minus 5, which is still positive 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. So f of positive 2 equals f of negative 2. Since that is a true statement, opposite inputs give me the same output, then we know it is an even function. Let's do another one. f of x equals 2 over x. So f of positive 2 equals 2 over 2, which is positive 1. f of negative 2 equals 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. That means that f of negative 2 is equal to the opposite of f of 2. Since they have opposite inputs, have opposite outputs, this is an odd function. The third one, f of 2 is equal to 2 cubed minus 2 plus 1, which is 8 minus 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. f of negative 2 is negative 2 cubed minus a negative 2 plus 1. That's going to be negative 8 plus 2 plus 1. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Since 7 is not equal to negative 5, and it's also not the opposite, it's not the same, it's not the opposite, then these two functions are neither even nor odd. Okay, now let's take a look at just do, using functions. Um, you may have learned before that you can't prove anything with just one number. We can say we're pretty sure about these being even, odd, or neither because we tried two opposite numbers and this is what we got. But how do we know that it works for every pair of opposite numbers? Well, the only way to tell if the function works for every pair of opposite numbers is to actually substitute negative x for x. Okay, so that means basically negative x represents the opposite of whatever x is. So if f of x equals x squared minus 5, what does f of negative x equal? So I'm going to substitute negative x wherever there's an x and see what happens. Well, if I square negative x, it's going to be the same as squaring positive x. So it's still going to give me x squared minus 5. So f of negative x is equal to x, x squared minus 5. f of positive x is equal to x squared minus 5. So we can say that f of x equals f of negative x, which makes this an even function. Um, now let's do the same thing with our second example. This is 2 over x. This is 2 over negative x. Okay. Well, 2 over negative x is the same as negative 2 over x. So we can say that f of negative x is the opposite negative of f of x. Okay, f of x is 2 over x. This is negative f of x. So this is an odd function. So this function is the opposite of my original function. All right. Now, if we put negative x in for x here, we get negative x cubed minus a negative x plus 1. So f of negative x is equal to negative x cubed is negative x times negative x times negative x, which is negative. So we have negative x cubed. Minus the negative x is plus x plus 1. Well, how are these two functions related? 
through x cubed minus x plus 1 and x negative x cubed plus x plus 1 are not opposites of each other. They would be opposites of each other if the second one said negative 1. So this, if we factored out a negative here, we would have negative x squared minus x minus 1. So notice this function, f of negative x, is not exactly the opposite of f of x. f of x is x cubed minus x plus 1. This is negative x cubed minus x minus 1. So they are not opposites. Um, so f of x does not equal f of negative x and f of negative x does not equal negative f of x, so neither even nor odd. Okay, so that's how you're going to prove odd and even symmetry using either specific numbers or the actual function. And this is just using the definitions that we uh, created in the previous video.